do enough yeah. to keep in shape because now I want to make sure I'm going to be good for another 20 or 30 years. Money uh, is not everything, but you have to have balance in your life. Protect your skin from the sun so you don't get cancer. Our bone density does decrease, but there are ways to keep our bone mass in check. My name is Mike Wall, and I'm passionate about exploring health. Come on a journey with me across Newfoundland and Labrador as we learn about wellness here at home. Newfoundland and Labrador has the highest average age of any province in Canada. And after working in health and wellness my entire career, I realized that a lot of things change as we age. It could be a wrinkle here and there, and our skin seems to give us the first indications that we're getting older. So who better to talk to than dermatologist Dr. Ian Landells? He has a love for the outdoors and physical activity. So if anybody has the answers on how to age well, it's him. Ian, what a day for a sail. It's awesome, man. Absolutely fantastic day. We yeah. got wind, we got sun, we got shade. It's, all, right. it's all good. We had sunblock, right? Right up your alley as a dermatologist. Always, always, always. Yeah, so I mean, you're a dermatologist. What, what do you guys do and how do you help people throughout their lives? Well, dermatology, we're physicians, first of all. Mm -hmm. we're, we, you go through medical school, then you specialize in, uh, I guess maintaining the health of and diseases of and conditions of the skin, hair, and nails. And I think about skin, I think about aging, right? So like how does our skin sort of change as we age through our lives? Well, I mean the skin is, it's the largest organ in the body yeah. and it's the most visible organ in the body. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone's looking at it. So it's the first sign of aging. I mean, you don't see your aging heart, you don't see your aging liver or lungs but you sure as hell see your aging skin. Yeah. And what most people, I think most people are realizing it now, but didn't realize is the main cause of aging of the skin is the sun. Right. And it's the ultraviolet radiation from the sun that breaks down every element of your skin and so that it changes. And that leads to the appearance of aging. Right. Okay, so what are some of the things that folks can do to try and mitigate that risk? Like, I mean, we put our sunblock on, first thing we get in there, quite often I'll be covered up when I'm out in the sun, but what are some things people can do? Well, the main thing is as early in life as possible, preferably in childhood when your parents are looking after you, they are keeping you covered yeah. with sun protective clothing first and foremost. Mm -hmm. Any skin that is exposed, sunscreen, uh, good, good high SPF sunscreen. We don't recommend less than 30. I personally use 50, 50 plus. Um, and I, I'll wear long sleeves. So I'm out here today, I wear long sleeves. I put sunscreen on every day, even when I'm working inside on my face and hands, because usually that's all that's exposed when I'm working. Mm -hmm. But now I got it on my legs, my hands, my face, my neck, my ears, and I wear a hat and sunglasses too, because right. UV radiation also causes uh, damage to the eyes and cataracts. Okay, so what if we're hearing this for the first time in our lives? Like, so you, you know, Sometimes it can be kind of scary, right? What if I wasn't that good when I was a kid? Can our skin heal itself over time? You can reverse some of those changes, and our body is absolutely incredible. And it, it can reverse some of the changes of aging uh, if, over time. But the first thing you have to do is stop the damage. And we haven't even talked about skin cancer yet. We're talking about aging, but you know, another outcome of too much or too intense UV radiation exposure to your skin is skin cancer. Uh -huh. And even that can be reversed by your body. Your body's immune system can reverse those changes, but it, you need to start protecting yourself and wearing sunscreen anytime you're outside, mm -hmm. even when it's cloudy, even yeah. when it's cold. Be aware of the UV index. We have some sun right now, but it's mixed sun and cloud. And you know, when it's cloudy, I looked and the UV index was five. Right. So if it's three, you need, or higher, you need sunscreen. Okay, so besides covering up and protecting our skin from the sun, what are some other things that you tell people to do to make sure they're healthy, whether it just be their skin or they're, they're just themselves, because you're a physician? Well, stay, you know, stay active. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're out doing something fun and active and, and uh, stay, you know, watch your diet, eat well. Yeah. Very, very important, have a well-balanced diet with you know, good, right vitamins and nutrients and minerals that are going to help sustain your body and that's that's as true of the skin and the hair and the nails as any other part of your body but you can live a perfect healthy life yeah. and eat well stay trim stay active in fact I see this a lot yeah. 
uh, people who are really into fitness, really into eating well and doing everything right, but they live in the sun and they don't wear sunscreen and their skin looks like hell. Yeah. And they look 20, 30 years older and they're getting skin cancers. And it's, it's that one, one facet of being healthy that they kind of missed out on. Yeah. You know, runners, I see tons of runners or anyone who does anything outside. Mm -hmm. You know, their skin is aging if they're not protecting it. You know, and, and you have to look at it like a helmet on a bicycle or a seatbelt in a car or a life jacket on a boat. It's, it's how you protect yourself when you are in that element. So Ian, you know, I could pick your brain all day long when it comes to this kind of stuff, but we got some sailing to do. Yeah. If you were to give people one piece of advice, what would it be? Protect your skin from the sun so you don't get cancer and you don't age prematurely. You don't want to look like your parents when you're still 35. Right. That's great advice. Mm -hmm. Why did Alec G. Henley care so much about the financial well-being of his friends and neighbors? Why did he spend his days traveling on foot and by coastal boats to teach hardworking folks how to plan and protect to invest in their futures? Alec's family believed that the best way to weather uncertainty was to help friends and neighbors. Over 75 years later, with a history of independence, Alec G. Henley lives on. In the trusted advice we give, the freedom we grow with you. At Pure and Simple, we believe in three things. Surrounding ourselves with good people, providing a welcoming environment to all, and delivering quality food with the freshest ingredients. It's that simple. Hi, I'm Sarah Cole with Hickman Select, and at Hickman Select, we offer all makes and models. We even have as traded pieces priced under $15,000. We also deliver anywhere in Newfoundland, including Labrador. Visit us at hickmanselect.ca. I had so much fun sailing with Ian. I learned how the sun can impact our skin and how we can look younger as we age. But most importantly, I learned how we can avoid skin cancer caused by sun exposure. I won't be going outside without sunblock anytime soon. When people think about aging, they often stop at what we can see. But what's happening inside our body? Thanks for having me up to your lab. I'm, I'm learning about aging. I was out with uh, Dr. Landells the other day and he kind of taught me about aging from the outside. But you are a skeletal biologist and a clinical anatomist. Mm -hmm. So you study all sorts of parts of the body, but in particular, you study bones. Tell me a little bit about your research. So I am a skeletal biologist, as you mentioned, and I study bone at the microstructural level and how it's impacted by different lifestyle factors. So aging, the substances we ingest, drugs, alcohol, uh, and I use high resolution imaging methods, both two dimensional and three dimensional, to really get sort of a 3D picture uh, of bone because it is existing in a 3D space, right? So it's not just sort of one picture cross section in time. I think that most people just think bones are bones and they, they just like they're like right. they're just this skeleton that doesn't change over time but you're sort of indicating they're dynamic and they do actually shift as we change through life. Absolutely. So again, I like to use the analogy that people consider bones as a series of steel bars that move our muscles, but they're not changing in response to our lifestyle factors. So this isn't just the exercise that we participate in, but also they're impacted from the foods that we eat, uh, different um, metabolic factors, hormonal factors. So, you know, menopause in women, for example, can greatly impact uh, our bone mass over time because women, again, are preferentially impacted by bone affecting conditions. Uh, because of hormonal factors. So um, it's sort of this living record that records aspects of our life history and is really dynamic. So when you look at a bone under a microscope, what actually happens to it as we get older? Right, so we are looking at bone microstructural parameters. So very small scale with the imaging uh, that I do. So high resolution, again, 3D imaging. Mm -hmm. And so our bone does have pores that run through it for vasculature, for nerves, and it also has resorptive spaces. And again, our bone aims to maintain this balance between resorption and formation. But when that balance becomes offset, we see an exaggeration of these pore systems. So they become larger, they become more interconnected, more complicated with age. Mm -hmm. And we also see a decrease in the cellular density. So bone cells that are involved with maintenance communication tend to be less connected. Okay, so they're yeah. not talking to each other as closely as they were, you know, when we were in our younger years. So our bones get more brittle with age, but is there anything we can do to try and improve that as we get older to try and protect ourselves from those fractures? Right. 
So in, not all the time, right? They get more okay. brittle. Our bone density does decrease, mm -hmm. but there are ways to keep our bone mass in check. Okay. So physical activity regimen is really important. So not only when we're of you know, increasing age, but also uh, when we're young. So getting into those activity regimens as a child, as a juvenile, you know, running 60 minutes a day is recommended for a juvenile, you know, 30 minutes of walking recommended for the adult, but those habits are easier to keep, right? right. As you get into that routine. Well, it's good news, at least we can do some things to, to repair them over time. So if you were to take somebody who was active, you know, maybe had better nutrition throughout their lives and a little healthier lifestyle and compared them to somebody who maybe wasn't doing some of those habits, how would they fare when it came to some of the risk factors? Right. So in addition to exercise, diet is really important mm -hmm. too. So for example, making sure that you're getting enough vitamin D, getting enough calcium, that you're eating well-balanced diets, so including leafy greens, proteins, these types of things. So it's not just physical activity, but also just overall health, right? That will lead to better, you know, vitality and potentially better outcomes, but a lot of it can be genetic as well. Right. So we can be predisposed to conditions that can impact our, our bone health. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So do what we can, and if we can't control certain things, at least we're better prepared to face them. Right, exactly. Cool. And so obviously our skeleton is extremely important for our, our life as we get older. What advice would you give people about how to keep it as healthy as they can be as they get as they age? So to stay active throughout your entire life, you start that process in your younger years and you are in the habit, right, of whatever exercise can be low impact, high impact, weight bearing, strengthening, that will really sort of set you up in a better position to continue that trajectory when you really need it. Yeah. Right? So there's lots of things we can do to mitigate the impacts of aging from the inside out. But are there other things we can do to make our lives easier as we age? We think about physical health and mental health, but what about financial health? How does saving now pay off later? So Brian, you've been fishing your whole life, eh? Yes, I started fishing with my father when I was eight years old. Where? Around these parts? Uh, Gander River was the first place we ever fished for salmon. Yeah, right on. I grew up uh, fishing the Miramichi. My grandfather was a river guide out there. It was something to look forward to in the summer times when we'd go visit, you know? Absolutely. It's one of those things you can kind of do your whole life too, hey? Well, I have been doing it my entire life. <laughs> and I don't consider myself that old. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's good. There's lots of time left to do it then. Exactly. Let's talk about financial health, and that's what you do for a living. What do you, what do, you do for folks? Well, financial wellness is very important um, because it gives people peace of mind. It uh, solidifies relationships. I mean, money uh, is not everything, but you have to have balance in your life, and part of the balance uh, is financial wellness. Right. How does money sort of impact health because I know they seem very different, but at the end of the day, do they have a correlation with one another? Yes, they, they have a correlation. You know, people's lifestyle, their habits, their eating habits, their exercise habits. You know, depending on how much money you have and how well you live within your means, it has an awful lot of impact on what you eat and how you live. Right. And your lifestyle. Well, that's the thing, as we get older too, you know, and we're not working as much, having some financial security is important. How does that impact somebody's quality of life as they age? Well, one of the biggest problems is most people don't uh, invest in themselves initially. Right. Since the 1920s, there's a theory has been in place that you um, pay yourself first. And to pay yourself first, you put in 10% uh, of your income to work for you and then you live off the other 90%. Right. Now, some people say, I can't do that. Well, that's not correct, because in that 10%, that includes your Canada Pension Plan. That includes your employer's contribution to Canada Pension Plan. So we all can do it. It's just a matter of getting help, getting a budget, and discipline. Easier said than done. Right, I think a lot of people don't save at all. Like they don't think about a sort of a rainy day and as they're older and why they're gonna need that. But I mean, if we start to get older and we don't have those means, what can that do to our golden years that are supposed to be some of our best years? Well, in our province, we have one of the shortest life expectancy rates uh, in, the, in the country. And a lot of that has to do with 
uh, the socioeconomic factors that people live with. And, you know, the median income in this province is not very high. Right. And so that means that people are eating foods that if they had more income, they'd be eating different foods. Right, right. So it's not just habits or it's, it's what can they afford to buy. Yeah. So that's the biggest problem. That's why we have such a big issue with diabetes. We have cancer rates. You know, there's so many different diseases that we have. And while some of it may very well be genetics, an awful lot of it is lifestyle. So having your financial house in order uh, will give you a better way of life, no matter what your income level is. So you talk about aging and aging healthy. If somebody is sick or they have health complications that are older, how does that impact their savings? It's got to be expensive, isn't it? Well, most people don't pr plan properly or don't plan properly early enough. And it's better to plan at earlier on in your life and get into that discipline pattern. Because remember, money makes money. So the longer you have an investment horizon, uh, the better you're going to do. It's dull, it's boring, so it's not a great conversation piece at happy hour, <laughs> uh, but it will work. Yeah. And a lot of us uh, don't do that very well. Right. So, I mean, you're in the advice business, that's what you do. What advice would you give people on how to you know, save and have a secure future when it comes to their finances and their financial health? Well, my first bit of advice is uh, th this life is not a dry run, so you might as well enjoy yourself as you go through life, but also financially plan to be around for a long time. And those that take the time and get the advice and stick to the plan, they're the ones that have the most enjoyable lives. <laughs> Sounds like the exact advice I give people for their physical health and their mental health. Same principle. So we know that healthy aging goes beyond physical health. There are habits that we can invest in that will help us in the long run. And these habits don't have to be overly complicated. Sometimes they can be as simple as getting up and going for a walk every day. These are habits that local sports legend Max Kirby does every single day. And after a few laps around the track with them, I walked away with 99 reasons why these simple habits are so important. I don't have the time. I wish I had more energy. Where do I even start? All right, guys, that's enough. Let's get back to it. Let's go, guys. Got this. Start where you are. This is your wellness journey. So what makes Quinlan different? Quality. The quality of our products and the quality of the relationships that we have developed with the people who harvest, process, transport, and ultimately buy that product. It's time to change how we view healthcare. We're leading the charge in global med tech innovation, saving lives, bringing millions in investments, and creating hundreds of jobs right here in Newfoundland and Labrador. Want to get involved? Visit bounceinnovation.ca. When I was 13 years old, I went to my first uh, track meet at the CMB Emory. And I won a couple of events, and they gave me a special medal, which I still have. Really? Yes. Now, you've been inducted into two different Hall of Fames for your athletics, right? Yes. Well, one was athletic, and the athletic one was track and field. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other one was Newfoundland and Labrador Sports Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. So for that one, I was involved with track and field, basketball, soccer, baseball, hockey, and I was doing a lot of bowling. Wow. So uh, I was very active all these years. So uh, at this age, did you expect that you would be still so active? Well, if I amounts to, I just didn't give up. I didn't know I was 99, I just kept going. <laughs> that's, that's good, that's good. Perfect, so did you do other things? Did you like always like sort of eat well and sort of stay away from some of the bad habits? Maybe cigarettes or smoking oh, or no, things like that? Never, yeah, yeah. never ever smoked, never ever drank. Mm -hmm. I don't even take a beer, no. not interested. 
So I guess one of the questions I got for you would be, what advice would you have for younger people when it comes to maintaining their, their health? Well, it's what it boils down to. First of all, get companions. Always have friends. And your friends will keep you active, and you'll be active with your friends. And if you can do it, keep these friends the rest of your life, because you'll get into a habit of doing things, and you'll keep doing it. But if you just don't have friends, you just go, of course, we're talking about young people. Mm -hmm. But we've got to remember now, people are older also. Like, for instance, a fellow sits behind a desk all his life, mm -hmm. and he goes home, and then he retires. Mm -hmm. So then he becomes a couch potato. Mm -hmm. He don't do anything. But these are the kind of fellows who got to get out and get active. Mm -hmm. Now, some people do a little exercise in their house, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is easy. Mm -hmm. There's no trouble to find something to do a little exercise and do a little exercise once a day for about 10 or 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Don't overdo it. And there's no trouble to find out what to do. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that message about being your best because people rely on you is an important one. Any last advice you'd give people about what they should be doing when they look forward at how they're gonna age healthy? People retire early now, so it wasn't amounts to don't become a couch potato. Make sure you sit down with yourself and say, all right, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a plan for the next 20 years. Yeah. And that's what you got to do. Either sit down with yourself and talk to yourself. Now, what am I going to do? Am I going to sit down and watch TV all day long? Or am I going to do this, that, and the other thing? I'm not going to, I'm retired now, so I'm not going to overdo anything. Yeah. But I'm going to do enough yeah. to keep in shape because now I want to make sure I'm going to be good for another 20 or 30 years. I'm inspired. Max has it all figured out. And after speaking with him, I'm not nervous about my next birthday. Aging starts the day we're born, and it's an amazing journey. But we may have more control over this journey than we think, and we shouldn't be afraid to get older. If we take care of our physical, mental, and financial health, we can set ourselves up for a smooth transition through each stage of our life.